What's good, YouTube? It's Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis, coming to y'all with another video. Um, check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Also, check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. If you want a t-shirt, you can message me on Facebook. I got different type of logos and images. You can get any color shirt, or you can change the logo on the shirt. Just message me on Facebook if you're interested. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Way Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with a video for Sunday. Today, we're going to talk about a trade that's on its way to finalizing, which is the Clippers trading Sam Decker away to um, the Cleveland Cavaliers. And this is kind of amazing. Not amazing, but this is kind of off guard, I should say, because Sam Decker was a guy that came in in that draft with a lot of hype. Can he be a? Can he improve his three-point shot? Can he get valuable minutes and on a decent team? So he got drafted by the Houston Rockets later in that draft, um, the 18th pick to be exact. Still a lottery pick. Um, he played three games his first season. Only played 77 his second season. Was getting 18.4 minutes a game. Shot 47 percent from the field, 32 percent from three. Um, 3.7 rebounds, one assist, 6.5 points. And obviously, as people forgot, but he, he was in a part of that Chris Paul trade that brought Chris Paul to Houston. And at the end of the day, I feel like he's a guy that I kind of wasn't so hyped about because remember, I am from Wisconsin. So knowing that he played in this area with him and Kaminsky, they both have had, honestly, a disappointing careers because Kaminsky, he did start – he does get valuable minutes, but he ain't dominant. He He's not going to be a superstar. He's not even probably going to be an all-star at this point. And seeing Sam Decker, a guy that is more modern, a guy that can play the two or the three and sometimes the four at that 6'9", 230, you will think that he will have a team that want to utilize him and want to keep him, not build around him. We knew Sam Decker, 18th pick. He wasn't a guy that everybody thought he was going to be a superstar either or even an all-star at best. We just thought that he would be a solid rotation player. And he has been able to do that with his second year in Houston. But for him to get 77 games and start two of them and then get 73 games with the Clippers and give you 12 minutes, 49% from the field, but into 3.5 shots and give you 66% from the free throw line, they even shoot one attempt a game. 2.4 rebounds and 4.2 points, as you can see by the title, this could be the beginning of the end because this trade is going to send him to another team and they're just going to wave him and buy him out. The Clippers didn't want to pay him because they wanted to open up another roster spot that, you know, they can use on somebody else like a veteran at the trade deadline, you know how to do the buyouts and people become available or they can just use them to, you know, get one of these undrafted players or somebody that's a free agent right now, get them for cheap, maybe a two way contract at best and then just go in a different direction. Sam Dicker, I thought would have made it a little bit better because he had that knack and that mentality and he wasn't a guy that was fixated. He was a guy that was going to accept his role and do what he had to do to help his team win. And it's kind of crazy to see him, you know, already at that point where he's in the make or break. I think he's still probably going to make an NBA roster. But this is basically at the end of his rookie contract. He basically going to be fighting at this point to stay in the NBA and it's only been three years. And that's why I have to say it like that because he hasn't been in the NBA that long. Like this is going to be his fourth season if a team picks him up and he doesn't have a great track record because when he played with the Rockets, he got 18 minutes, but he gave you solid production, but not production that was worthy of a sixth, seventh or eighth man spot. And with the Clippers, they took him as salary filler to get Chris Paul out of there. Um, and on top of that, they're trading him particularly straight for the roster spot. They didn't even trade him for a first-round pick. They didn't trade him for a second-round pick. They just traded him to a team that had the roster spot in the cap space so that way they can get rid of his contract and get rid of him so they can get another spot for somebody else. And that's just basically letting you know, even though the Clippers do have abundance of guards and forwards, um, they was in they they said this guy we got to get rid of him and I'm I'm a little surprised but I think he will get picked back up 
being 6'9", 230, um, the ability to switch. He's not a great defender, never came in the NBA. We never thought he was going to be a great defender anyway. Personally, for me, I never seen him as a great defender, even, you know, as years has went on, now that he's been in the league for three years. That thing may hurt him. He might have to become a 3 and D guy if he really wants to have that longevity in his career because when he came out in Wisconsin, he had a lot of hype because they went to the, the, the finals in the NCAA and that he'll rise his stock in the draft, getting him a lottery selection. And that's pretty good um, to go 18th to a team that you can fit in around because you have multiple stars on that team. And even with the Clippers, having guys like Lou Williams, Austin River, DeAndre Jordan, guys that you know know their role but also can create shots for you, um, that's what you want to be in because Sam Decker is not going to blow past you or – score on you consistently in isolation he needs other players to basically um help him stay in the league so you you'll probably see him go to a team that has multiple stars and be that ninth tenth guy um on a roster that probably might get the 15 10 to 15 minutes a game um it's still some teams that can utilize him depending on how much cash he wants at this point he can't um you know, they say beggars can't be choosers. At this point, he can't really decide what type of contract and where he wants to go. It's kind of, I got to get uh, a spot so I can be in, on a roster by the time the season starts. I don't want to go overseas. But I done seen some players through the draft going undrafted and some players that was in the NBA last year that's significantly better than Sam Decker. And they're not even on NBA rosters either. And you know, you can say that he's young, but nobody wants to sign him to a multi-year deal either because they don't want to give him caps, take take too much of their cap space or the small percentage that they have left on a guy that might not even be a rotation player at this point in his career. So this is tough. Um, I never was a Sam Decker fan, but seeing this news, I had to make a video about it because at the end of the day, I thought that Sam Decker would be in the league longer than three years. It's basically he survived his rookie contract, and after that, it's time for him to move on. But I definitely want to see what they do with Frank the Tank Kameski, see if he's going to be another guy that might get that two, three-year deal, or will he be a guy that's out of the league also. He has more staying power because he can be a stretch guy. Sam Decker hasn't been able to develop into a knockdown three-point shooter. That's something that we knew that he needed to improve, and he hasn't been able to get enough minutes and enough playing time and enough, you know, concentration with those stars to really knock that three down. And now he's at the point where if he's not going to be able to play defense and knock down that three, he's going to be going overseas for the rest of his career, which is unfortunate, but it's a business. And it's ugly, but at the same time, you know that this is an area that you can potentially be a guy that can be a stretch four or stretch three and D guy. You have to go out there, and, and, and his agent should have told him this too. You got to go out here and try to play this role. You might move up, you might get better, um, but you need to do this specifically if you want to stay in the NBA. And I think that this is going to be very humbling for him to get waived and basically be a free agent. Um, for the first time of his career and not only will he be able to see if he's going to get any offers but um, we're going to see what type of deal that he gets now I don't make another video about it no I'm just surprised that you know at the end of the day this 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 could be the end of Sam Decker's NBA career and a guy that came up in Wisconsin and Milwaukee seeing that he might be done I was like hey, you know let me see what people think about this but at the end of the day, I think Houston got what they wanted out of him. They was able to use his salary. He was a solid player. He got 18 minutes a game. He hit a couple threes. He made a couple plays off the bench when they needed him. Mike D'Antoni came in and basically utilized him. Obviously, they prefer to have Chris Paul. That's when they got rid of him in the first place to be a filler. But at the same time, um, it helped them get Chris Paul. And now we're going to see how Sam Decker is going to take this. Like I said, it's a huge humbling position, but it is a business. So let me know what you guys think about Sam Decker potentially being an NBA or potentially playing overseas or even going all the way down to the G League trying to get called up during a regular season. And we're going to see how much he really improves because the, this type of experience is going to force him to make decisions and to get better. 
if you're not good enough to get to the NBA, you got to, you know, start back from the bottom and get back to the top, which is getting back to the NBA. And if he has to go through the G League, it's going to be incredibly humbling. But at the same time, that might help you work on some skills and work on some things that you wouldn't probably be able to do in an NBA game because you don't get that many minutes. And this should allow him to see what he needs to work on. And this might actually make him become a more complete, better player because he's going to have that playing time. Even if he goes overseas, he's an NBA player. So he's going to get about 18 to 25 minutes or more, depending on what team he goes to. And this can make him a better player. It can make him more hungrier. And on top of that, at the end of the day, it can fill out the rest of his game. Maybe he can become a 3 and D guy now that, you know, he's going to be playing more time, maybe outside of the NBA. And maybe he just makes a name for himself overseas or even in the G League where teams basically have to bring him back up if he's too good. Um, we see a lot of NBA players go to the G League and show out or average 30 or just destroy the league. Um, I, I think Sam Decker has some ability. If he was able to do it on a college level and he was able to add what he has been able to do on the NBA level, he should be able to be one of those players that can go there and get you 15 to 20 plus points a game in the G League or even overseas. Jimmer Fredette been getting buckets, but he hasn't been able to come over still. Um, even if he wanted to, he might not have a significant role on the team either. So it don't always work in your favor. But at the same time, let me know what you guys think. Do you think he's a buzz? Do you think it's over? Do you think he's going to get on the team? Would you sign him? Um, and let me know what you guys think. Can he be a 3 and D guy? Can he switch and play multiple positions and hit that corner three? Maybe that's what he really needs to focus on because that can help him stay in the league because that's what everybody looking at. Wings that can play multiple positions and knock down a spot of three. Um, and get to the basket and get out in transition. He can get out in transition. He can cut to the basket and play a role. But can he knock down that three and guard multiple positions? So it's the NBA, so three and switch happy. That's going to be ha the direction he's going to have to go in if he wants to continue his NBA career. Check out my website, analysisplayground.com. You can find my T-shirts on my Facebook page. Like on Facebook to show support. Also, um, if you want a T-shirt, you can message me. You can get any color. And you can get any logo that's on my, my uh, Facebook page. All you have to do is message me what color the shirt, what color logo, and I can get it shipped out to you. And if you're in Wisconsin, I, I've been getting a huge following here. Um, you can just message me and we can just get it delivered that day or mail it out to you also if you don't want to drive or meet up. So, Quinn Wade, basketball analysis, I'm gone. And thanks for the support and continue watching. And let me know what you guys want to see next if you want to have um, a pick of that too. I'm gone.